All right, so the claim that we must automatically exclude the possibility of Christians examining and arguing about the authority of God's revelation while simultaneously employing the authority of God's revelation is nothing more than arbitrary prejudice on Anthony Flew's part. Mm -hmm. He allowed this practice when it comes to logic. He would allow it uh, when it comes to your eyes, but he says, nope, not with the Bible. Sorry. (laughs) And so he tells us again, he's not asking, you know, anyone just to accept the Bible willy nilly. What he's saying is, here's the Bible's claim to be authority. And so now you have to take it as the authority, right? He says, no, he's not saying that, right? That's not what he's saying. Accept it willy nilly. It it claims to be authority. So you have to take it as the authority. Nope, nope. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, all he's asking is, let's be reasonable. Let's argue about this. When someone says, I can't make your ultimate authority the Bible, right? You can't do that. He says, yes, I can. (laughs) I can do that just as much as you can make logic your ultimate authority and still try to be logical, Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, let's... uh, uh, compare apples to apples here. <laughs> right. Yeah. And again, the, the, when, when it comes to internal critique, it bypasses a lot of the, the stuff and, and we can still um, um, e- exist. Uh, we would say because we're made in the image of God and we sh- share that similarity, that universality, uh, they would just appeal to uh, things like uh, we're the best suited for the environment. And so we share uh, certain survival traits uh, in order to allow us to kind of exist and communicate in certain fashions and we're smart enough to do that. So some, something along those lines. Um, and, and so um, from, from there we can kind of go down the path from there, but we're at least starting back a little bit farther than just going, here are the facts, here are the facts, here are the facts. <laughs> All right. So the internal logic of a system, uh, imagine that someone says, I see if there is a God and he reveals himself, it would be his word that tells us what revelation is. That means that his word must validate his word. He says, I understand that, but I don't like that possibility. I am ruling that out in advance. There cannot be a God that speaks with such authority. That's what the the other person says. Right. So they've kind of ruled out that particular (laughs) ultimate. If there is a a God, he wouldn't do it this way. That's right. Okay. By what standard, Dawkins, um, (laughs) do do you you say that God wouldn't do this because uh, you that have to then believe in a God that you yeah. don't believe exists. Right. So, uh, so it's a, that was a theological argument. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, and so he's suggesting here that, uh, you know, this internal logic of the system, right? There cannot be a God that speaks in such authority. He says, does this sound like a faith commitment to you? Mm. I will not <laughs> allow the possibility that there is such a God. Yes. That sounds like a faith commitment, right? The funny thing is, he says, usually without showing an openly unbelievers have this wild, arbitrary volitional commitment that, that is thought out so badly that it does the very thing they accuse Christians of doing. They're the ones who say, no, I won't consider the possibility of that. Yeah. Right. They oh, no, it's shut just a it lack down. of belief. It's that's only a why. lack of belief. Yeah. That, that's it. That, that's the only where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many people will accuse you of being irrational. Probably not the correct word, but that's the, that's going to be the accusation. <laughs> it's important that you know what faith really is and how it is to be defended. It is especially important that you know you are not operating from a position of faith in contrast to other people who operate on a position of re- reason. Rather, you hold to a faith that will save reason and make it reasonable to use reason, whereas the unbeliever does not have the basis to account for reason and its consistent reliability. And so um, that's what uh, folds into the to the next chapter of uh, of having a, a, a foundational faith and, and uh, from there we um, will build upon um, does the Christian worldview kind of allow f- things like science, reason, morality, um, or, or is it just kind of uh, day fide day um, and, and dictums that, uh, that uh, we, <laughs> we, we read in some dusty old book from, from uh, uh, goat f- herders uh, from the bronze age or whatever it might be. <laughs> and, and there's no real basis for, for our understanding. Well, does the other person have the, those same commitments? So, oh, you're just um, employing uh, a morality that existed about six minutes ago. And uh, as long as Twitter says it's fine, uh, you, you're going to exist in that. <laughs> That's okay. Fine. By what standard are we uh, g- going to go down those paths? And so 
that's the purpose of this type of argumentation, this, this uh, kind of transcendent uh, um, um, point, point of view of taking a step back and saying, before we start arguing about facts, let's talk about what are facts and how we come to know things are facts. And so um, uh, th- that's uh, the purpose here of, of really honing in on, on the, 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 the initial foundations. Right. And, and, and so the, the key, then the idea with this particular chapter, the point he's trying to make is it's impossible to think without presuppositions. Right. Mm-hmm. The claim is, well, you can't have presuppositions because we want to have some type of neutral stance. And what he's really arguing is there, you can't have neutrality because everybody has presuppositions. Everybody has ultimate authorities that they begin and base their right. arguments on. Which right? is why he starts with a look at Descartes, because that's what, what the claim is, is get rid of everything you could possibly know. Uh, there's a, a Mitch he, uh, Hedron uh, a joke about uh, forget everything you know about rice. Okay, that was easy. But now I've forgotten what, you know, what are we talking about again? Because I, th- then I have no basis to, to, to understand what you're saying when I say, oh, there's this grain of, right. well, I've, I've completely forgotten about that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so going back to Descartes, I, I'm, I'm doubting everything. Are you, are you doubting your doubting? Uh, n- no, because then I couldn't do it. But you said, you know, doubt yeah. everything, right. including doubt, including the eye. You're not doing that. So can you live? Are you, are you doubting the I? Yeah. yeah, the, yeah that, you're, that you're existing? <laughs> right. <laughs> and doubting? Yeah. Right. Just a, a program in Tron, and, and you don't really exist. 